This is a University of Otago podcast. This film was made by students as part of the filmmaking course at the Centre for Science Communication. Ayo mato mato tipo na haere 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 ki o tipo na ehunana ki tu a tarimo rapa ki tai. The spiritual connection we hold with the dolphin is long lasting. The spiritual connection. The respect, the ihi to wehi to mana, which each holds the other in high regard, has always been there. There are three places in New Zealand where the dolphin is very close to humankind and humankind is close to the dolphin. We named the bay at Waikawa Pahu Bay. Our people have been in that area for many, many generations. Pahu is the name of the Hector's dolphin. Pahu is a lifelong friend. We call him Pahu because uh, of the noise he or she makes. As they're going along, they go Phew. They seem to, uh, to communicate with us in a human way and we try to communicate to them in their way. They knew us by our sounds and so we used to call the dolphins and the dolphins would know who was calling. But the trick was to call them under the water and we'd call them like this. Or, mm -hmm. and they would come, and they would know who we were. I always took a great interest in the dolphins. Even back in 65, uh, the dolphins were always there. They were just lovely to watch. They were doing what they want to do. I could walk along the beach and in a wave break count up to well, the best count I counted up to in one wave was 26, and the wave broke and I lost count. <laughs> so there was quite a large number of dolphins here back then. I come here every day, and if I see them, I, I just love it. I don't know what it is, but when you see them surfing through the waves, you just, it's just magical. Been farming family farm for 20 years and decided we'd had enough of that. And thought we'd tourism was just a new thing down here and people laughed at us a bit because we were really the pioneers of tourism at Waikaro or Pulpus Bay, apart from just one or two others. And at that time Kaikoura was starting to make a name for itself with dolphins whale watching and 
I thought, yeah, we could hack his dolphins. We'll see what we can do here. I think the most fascinating thing about dolphins is that they appear to be so much like us. There was a load of school kids come here one day and it was early on in December and there'd been two or three dolphins in the bay but we hadn't seen them for days. Immediately those children got in the water there was four dolphins right there beside them. As soon as the kids were gone we never seen them for another two weeks. Yeah they do, they do think there's something special about dolphin but I'm afraid the Cold hard facts are they're just an ordinary little animal like any other animal and they just do what they need to do to survive, you know, that's about, about it. Dolphins are one thing they seem to go for more than any other wildlife, so it's always been a bit of a puzzle that one. Suddenly they fancy themselves swimming with a dolphin or something like that because they've seen it on TV. With my son, most memorable thing. He was going through chemotherapy. He was out on his surfboard and the dolphins just hung around him for the whole time he was out there as if he knew there was something not right. Yeah, it was just incredible just to watch him. Maybe because I see too much of them or something like that, but doesn't mean to say I don't enjoy going out to see them every time. Can't get enough of it some days. <laughs> with people's interest in dolphins and wanting to swim with dolphins and all this sort of thing, it may be a good thing, but then again it may not. Well, they shouldn't really be swimming with Hector's dolphins at all, I don't think. When you're looking at 7,000 little Hector's dolphins and people trying to swim with some of them. Between the camping ground and the crab along here, uh, it's all surveyed out for uh, 34 sections. So that's going to more than double our population. That is very scary. There's a simple formula for looking after wildlife and that's don't have too many people around it. I look at it this way, that, okay, there might be 25, there might be 50, I don't know. But they're still coming, they're still having babies and as far as I'm concerned, I don't believe people that go out swimming are hampering the dolphins. I mean, there's so many other things out there, pollution, plastic, fishing nets, um, all those things that catch these poor little fellas. The rate though I've seen them declining over the last few years is it's quite alarming. I don't know if my newest grandchild will get the pleasure of remembering seeing Hector Dolphins here. Their intelligence that their way of life, their regard for their environment is on a higher plane than those of humankind.
the dolphins and the, the ecotourism that they uh, represent, in fact, they, they're kind of almost singularly uh, responsible for developing ecotourism here, has created jobs. And so for a, a very special set of reasons, we're grateful for the dolphins for creating opportunities for others to live here permanently. You know, they are living in a world that's completely different to us, but yet they're still quite similar in a lot of their personalities, a lot of their traits. I sometimes wonder whether it's who coming to look at who, you know? Is it the, us swimming with the dolphins or the dolphins coming to have a look at us? But I think they must think we're pretty clumsy, funny looking things down there, that's for sure. They can be quite cheeky and they'll pop up just behind you and they know that you don't know that they're there. Coming right at you, mate. Gonna go right between, oh, right in front of you. Put your head in there. Back it. Initially, some people come to come swim with the dolphins with us and they're expecting to go out to an enclosed area, maybe hop on the back of one and go for a bit of a ride. They think they're gonna deal with Flipper. Quite often, swimming with the dolphins is people's dream, and it's cool being able to make that come true. Just seeing the look on their face when they see the dolphin and they love it. Dolphins come with a lot of really nice baggage in a sense because I think that over the years they've developed a kind of mystique, you know, part of it's a, a new agey sort of crystal sparkly in the sunshine communicating with higher intelligence stuff. But also I think it's the actual experience that you have with the dolphin. You come away feeling that you've actually been in the ocean talking to the animals like Dr. Doolittle or something. The better we know our fellow beings who live in the sea, the greater will become the understanding between the two of us. We must not live in the past. We must be guided by our increasing knowledge of one another. What I'm really focusing on is the movements of the animals um, around the sanctuary. So we're using photo ID to look at uh, the alongshore movements. It doesn't matter how you're feeling, you can be feeling a bit down or um, if the research isn't going particularly well, you know, that day or, or something, or you know, the weather's not particularly flash. Um, just every time you come across a group of Hector's dolphins, really, it, it seems to put a smile on my face. When I came to New Zealand in 99, I was very fortunate to get a job helping out my now PhD supervisors, Drs. Liz Slocan and Steve Dawson, on one of their um, Hector's dolphin abundance surveys. Sort of fell in love with the animals then and with the research. You know, I've been studying them ever since. We started off as folks who were most interested in communication and behaviour. But we have, because of the impact on them, become more conservation biologists. When I penned in my master's thesis, the following day, Steve and I got in a car and drove to the South Island and had a pilot survey, if you like, a trial. Then we spent probably a year and a half fundraising. We had very limited money and uh, we only had a small boat. We had a four metre inflatable boat. So we decided to um, literally do something that I wouldn't let any of my students do now. 
We took this small boat around virtually the entire South Island in six months. It was, it was great fun. It was pretty scary at times. Going around the South Island doing that survey, doing that first piece of work was just a real uh, privilege. It was an amazing trip really. What we were trying to do is we were trying to figure out where Hector's dolphins were found and, and approximately how many there were because that at that time wasn't known. It's one of the biggest surprises about Hector's dolphin which just is so different from what we see with dolphins anywhere else in the world is that these are extraordinary homebodies. These are dolphins that think that swimming 18 kilometres is an awfully long way. That lack of long distance movement is why we see the genetic differences between the populations that we do now. The Maui's dolphins, the North Island Hector's dolphins are really different from the South Island populations. They look similar, but they're actually quite different. I think South Island Hector's dolphin is, um, has got a good chance of surviving. It's a different story with North Island Hector's dolphin or you know, the subspecies called Mary's dolphin. The population up there is very, very small. Even on the survey around the South Island, we started to find out that fishermen were catching Hector's dolphins in their gill nets. This is an impact that we are having on those dolphins every day. As we speak, there are dolphins being caught in gill nets and, and trawl fisheries. If we don't eliminate bycatch and gill nets, then the North Island Texas dolphin will go extinct in a few decades. We've lived for millenniums with the dolphin and uh, to not live with a dolphin would be a tragedy. The uniqueness that we have with, with the dolphins is, is one that we should treasure and one that we should pass on. The legend about Panereira is one that my kaumatua, Uncle John, he talked about this ancestor that came over on a dolphin. there's anything that should be um, the icon of New Zealand, I, I think it should be the dolphin. New Zealand Aotearoa could be described as the marine mammal capital of the world. We have more species of marine mammals around our coast than any other country in the world. And the very rarest of all is Maui's dolphin. How many Maui dolphins are thought to be left? Hundred. That's dead right, a hundred to a hundred and fifty. If we continue to let it happen, then um, the next generation is going to suffer, not us.
I know it's a, it's going to be a hard task. I know it's a losing battle, but you've got to try something. I went to Wellington f five years ago, and I told them, you know, by the time they get their research, the dolphins will be extinct. So what's the use of their research after all all that time they spent trying to figure it out? We've only got 150 left. What's to figure out? You know, the old people, the grandmothers and the great-grandmothers who brought me up, they believed that when we died, that our spirit uh, went back to the sea. And um, I believe it too. Because when the orator stands on the marae, the uh, orator says to the person that's just passed away, uh, go, go, go. Go now, go to your relatives who are beckoning you from beyond the kelp. And this took place um, usually when the moon was full. And that's what they really believed, that uh, Pahu was a reincarnation of just certain people that were called uh, when their time came. Ayo mātou mātou tipuna haere 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 Aire ki o tipuna e hunana ki tua te rimorapa ki tai.